Hi guys, I'm happy to announce that Xtile is now available for Blender. Xtile was initially released for Unreal Engine a while back and later for Unity. And for those who don't know what it is, Xtile is a bunch of mathematical functions grouped into nodes in this case that eliminates repetitiveness in tiling textures. It works on both geometric pattern textures as tiles and bricks and also on organic textures. In the case of Blender versions, you have two main master materials depending on what type of textures you are working on. So first thing is to install the add-on. So if you come here to the Edit Preferences in the Add-ons tab, uh, if you click on Install, then you can uh, easily find the uh, zip file and install it, and that's all you have to do. Uh, from here, in order to access the actual nodes, uh, if you come into your Shader Editor, then if you uh, use a shortcut chip A, you will find Xtile, Xtile Geo, Geometric, and Xtile Org for Organic. If you click either one of these, you will get the whole uh, tree set up for you and ready to go. Uh, you can also access it here on the right in the parameters. You have an Xtile tab here. You again, you have Xtile Geo or Org, depending on which one you want to use. Again, add shader, and you will have the tree created for you. So here, let's quickly go through the uh, nodes here. Uh, on the left, we have all the Xtile parameters. And here we have all the uh, texture uh, parameters that you can change. On the right, we have the, uh, actually here are the textures and here are the texture parameters. And here are, is the dirt grunge uh, parameters that you can lay on top of everything else. Uh, but I want to focus on this uh, set here, which is the X tile. So here, uh, let me get this out of the way and show you. Here we have a basic uh, tiling uh, texture of this brick pattern. So if I come here, I can tile this and you can see what it looks like. And let's go back and see how to make this work. The first thing that you need to do in Xtile is measure the columns and rows that make up the texture. In this case, you have six columns, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and you have 16 rows. So here in the define columns and rows, you would enter six for the columns and 16 for the rows. And let's turn the tiling up. And as you can see, nothing has happened. And that's because our random seed is still at zero. So once I crank this up, you'll see what's going to start to happen. As you see, we have a fully randomized uh, image right now. And um, we also have the ability now to uh, manipulate the sliding of each row or column in this texture. So the way to do that is um, if you come here, we can... Um, change the slide X parameter and you can see we can change how this looks but in this case we want to change the Y so I'm going to change the Y and you can see that we have now a non-repetitive tiling brick uh, material in addition to this we can change the random color strength here so we can add a different uh, sort of tint to various uh, to random uh, blocks or tiles in this texture set. This is controlled by the random color variation parameter here. And um, you can also change the uh, roughness in the same way. Now we also have the scrap width in the horizontal and vertical and basically what this does is it allows you to mask out the grout so that you have better control of the parameters on the color and the roughness. So I'm just going to do this here. Let me adjust this how it should be. Let's turn this down to something like that. And I can also change some of these, some of the roughness here to get a little more rough roughness variation. And as you can see how um, random it looks and how easy it is to achieve this. So with that, let's uh, quickly look at the org, which is the organic um, texture here. And again, let's find the node tree. Again, similar sort of philosophy, X tile parameters on the left, texture parameters here. Uh, to change the textures in this uh, uh, node tree, 
because they're nested, we need to go into the node group itself. And in order to do that, you would select it and just uh, click on tab and you can change it here and then you uh, can exit it the same way. Uh, here I also have a detail normal, which is also, uh, you can access it through the texture parameters. Again, you would enter it uh, by pressing the tab key and here you can uh, change it. So let's look again at the overall um, X tile parameters here, which uh, I think is, are the most important ones. And um, just to show you, here we have the overall tiling of the uh, texture itself. Uh, and the way it works is that it blends between uh, two uh, sets uh, of non-repetitive uh, tiling textures uh, on a different scale using this uh, scale mask breakup. So you can adjust this, uh, the amount of um, breakup of the different scales using this uh, tiling he here, this tiling parameter. And here you can adjust the scale between the two sets. Here you have the random variation that you can also adjust. Uh, here you have the blend scale of each set. So for example, you can uh, change the amount of blending that occurs uh, on each of the uh, two uh, sets. Uh, because they are created uh, in a mathematical uh, way, uh, each quadrant uh, can be adjusted through this blend scale and also through this edge breakup, which allows it to be uh, more uneven at the edges of the uh, breakup. So that's how you achieve uh, non-repetitive tiling uh, textures for your projects uh, using Xtile. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.